Hi guys, welcome to this powerful video with Apostle Michael Robo. This particular video was carefully selected and edited to improve your knowledge on spiritual things and draw you closer to God. Don't forget to like this video, share with loved ones and family, and subscribe. Stay tuned. He forms a dimension that should command the attention of his generation, but he doesn't have the culture to sustain it. He wakes up in the morning and the Holy Ghost wakes him up with a song. And as he wakes up, he discards that song and goes online to see how many likes he had from the post he posted yesterday. He jumps to eat. The Holy Ghost restrains his appetite. It's as if if he put that food in his mouth, it's a sin. He check, 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 check. After 30 minutes, he struggles. That you are struggling immediately is a suggestion that there's a movement in your spirit. So instead of aligning to that movement, he, he, 30, after 30 minutes, oh boy, only the living serve the Lord. And then only the living serve the Lord. And he remains on that mountain for 20 years. And when people begin to rise, you say, ah, ah, but that's, I mentored that young man. I, I taught him the ways of God. The ways of God. <laughs> when he sees the people he trains show up and they are making impact, he now sit down as a senior person and he acts as if he's busy so that they will greet him first. Let people know that he's their senior. <laughs> And he lives with momentary gratification when they should be answering the, 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 the cry of his generation. And the problem is that the spirit of God will not strive with man forever. So while the man violates the protocol of the realm, God begins to look for another man. God begins to look for another man. He thinks he's so special. Until the time he says he's ready, they now tell him they have anointed another David. So the house of Saul becomes weaker and weaker. The house of David becomes stronger and stronger because they attend to the demands of the realm. Sons of light. They are those who walk in the light and keeps the demands of light. You see, have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are the habitations of cruelty. If you don't have regard for the covenant, you'll be swallowed up by the thick darkness. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. The easiest thing to do is to stir people. The easiest thing to do is to impart people. But it takes a lifetime of commitment to sustain it. Wise men can carry the weight of an impartation until they come to the landmark of the next impartation. So they receive it, carry it jealously until they come to another place and something has come from them. David was anointed three times. He kept all of it until he became king over Israel. He didn't lose the anointing of the kingship over Judah. He carried it by that consecration until he came to a point where the third impartation came. But many people, even when he was anointed before his family, they would lose that one. So every time they receive something fresh and they never become anything. The laws of the realm are rigid. They are rigid. You can be a Deborah. But whether you manifest to your generation as a Deborah is a function of how much you keep the laws of that office. So there are many of you here that God is bringing a demand. What you need now is not a prophetic confirmation. You already know who you are. But the energy to bring forth is lacking. There are some that God begins to tell, start a chain prayer, start a chain prayer. And that wind will trouble them for six months. They won't respond until the wind will lift. They will now find a group of people and say, let's go for three days retreat. Let's go for three days. And they do three days retreat. Oh, oh, oh. And then they come back and say, we have touched something. We have touched something. Better move when God is helping you. You can't carry your weight. If there's no energy in your body, that's when you know your leg is very heavy. You don't know how heavy this hand is. It's because you have been sufficed from within. That's why you can swing your hand. If the energy is... Have you been before? 
and you attempt to carry yourself that's when you discover you are very heavy better move when god is carrying you because when that law comes there's a there's a grace supplied to make you walk in it let's stop this abortion of spiritual atmospheres abortions of spiritual impartations abortion of graces that are released on us we go from revival meetings to revival meetings from men of god to men of god yet there doesn't seem to be a change so we are looking for new sensation new sensation new sensation we become men of sensations but the wise men of old they carried with them words they watched them they guarded them and their lives became as rigid as those laws i came in from ibadan yesterday <laughs> one of the old men that we were going to see before i had to travel and a lot of things men that worked with god from the days of babalola is one of his only existing descendants there are about two of them living now direct descendants the same culture they learned from the man they are still practicing to today 6 a.m the man babalola wakes up wake rings the bell and they pray 9 a.m rings the bell 12 rings the bell 3 p.m rings the bell 6 p.m ring the bell so if you visit you may say okay this week they are doing retreat then you'll be there for one month and the man keeps unless he's not at home and then you come and say i received the mantle of babalola can you keep the consecration that's why it's a joke it's a joke every time we talk about it it's a joke and this man they carry that culture to today this man just keep the gate they won't go they we are okay we will they he was he was one of them was in the car moving and a mad woman stood in front of the car and they were honey trying to drag her and say leave her he went down and did the mad woman and the mad woman came he shook her she fell down when she stood up she was cleansed you now say oh boy this dimension no be small he was crossing the road and cars were passing passing they don't they didn't want to stop you know did like this and the car stopped when they passed the man on the car the engine had knocked because he did like this they on the car they brought they struggled for more than two hours what happened say the baba passed and did like this they say ah uh, ah uh, you should have known now they now went to the baba you own your car to the right he said tell him to turn it to the left how will they how will they glitch how will they glitch on turn to the left the car was designed to turn to the right but they weren't talking even iron obey him The guy turned the car to the left and the car picked. Because somebody said, you, you would think, okay, wait, let me pass. As he did like this, it's not only the driver that heard, even the engine heard. And then you see, you say, hey, this dimension, leave with him for three days. There's a young man in the Badon today. He starts his service 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you like, be 1,000. All of you will line up. The guy was ministering. Somebody fell. His head broke. He commanded the blood. The blood got that back and entered the head. And the guy stood up. How did he enter? The mom told him, go and live with this Baba for three days. And when he leave, the Baba said, I afflict you with miracles. <laughs> There's one of them. The law that God told him, He said, Give one ear to men, give one ear to me. Every time the guy is walking, his hand is like this. Even when he's ministering, his hand, this ear is for angels. And he has kept it for more than 40 years. Every of the picture you see, his hand is like this. This ear belongs to God, this one belongs to men. And he was ministering somewhere, and he called the lady out. And you are over 40 and you are not yet married and all the men that come say your chest is flat now go look at any lady any size of breast you want call the person to come and the lady went to the crowd call somebody say go to the bathroom collect her bra wear it when she wore the bra as two of them were coming out the horse scattered 
the whole scattered. <laughs> the listing, the listing in this world is manifestation. But every manifestation stands on a consecration. Somebody go into a bathroom, flat chested, coming out later, it's as if he's carrying load on the chest. Because no prayer, nothing. Just with the talk, it happens. And I told myself, no. This life, we can't live it normally. I refuse distraction in my life. You know what God has been brooding in your heart for long. If you know what is good for you, go and start attending to it. Thank you, Jesus. Let me share something with you briefly. <laughs> you know, sir, sometimes what we need to do is to have camp meetings where we, we share the word of the Lord for days. People are not strong inside. We are light. We want to hear stories and jump. Receive impartations, fly. But you can't send one man to take a city. But in the days of the apostles, it was normal. It was normal. You go here, you go here, you go here. And the next thing you are hearing strange sounds from those territories. What happened? He said, that guy has set the city on fire. Today, if somebody becomes serious about God, he is an apostle. If somebody catches fire, he has become an evangelist. Because there are no men. So things that should be natural becomes a ticket and a commission into ministry. It's a body. The second thing about the sons of light is that they are carriers of authority. They are carriers of authority. God gave us authority so that we can rule in the demonic realm and bring his will to pass. Because the opposition against the will of God comes from the demonic realm. If your destiny is not working, if your calling is not working, if your family is not working, if things around you are not working, there is one place to look, is the demonic realm. And in order to subdue the demonic realm, God gave us something called authority. Authority is actually not for men of stature. Authority is actually God's insurance to you while you are growing. I will show you the difference shortly. You know, sometimes if we stick to the scripture, we will, we will violate a lot of things. So we just... Let me show you a scripture. John chapter 1. Obviously, the Holy Ghost wants me to keep it calm. So, I'm tired of struggling. Let me share the word of God. I'm sorry. I'm tired of struggling. I don't know what, who he wants to hear me. John chapter 1 from verse 11. He said, He came unto his own. His own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave authority. To become the sons of God. So you were not given authority when you have stature. Or when you have attained stature. You were born into authority. You, it was that authority that, be, that gave birth to you. It's like the son of a king. He was born a prince. The only thing that will keep him. From the exercise of his authority is either if he is not aware, or if he doesn't believe, or if he doesn't exercise it. And these three things will happen because he doesn't grow up. So we don't receive authority when we have gained stature. It's authority that ensures us while we grow into stature. 
Because you were born into authority. And God designed it like that because if he doesn't, the devil will lick you up. Because you don't have the strength to contend with him. Some of the demons that fell from heaven, if you see them, you will faint. So if you are waiting for when you have stature to fight them, you may die before you get there. So before you got there, God gave you something that if they see it, they flee. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he sent them out, babes. Babes, he sent them out. Say, go into all the cities that I will come and visit. And when they went, they were surprised that the devils were subject to them. They didn't know they, had, they could cast out devils. And they couldn't until the authority was given to them. So it was not something they have experience in. It was not something they had the stature to handle. They were babes. They didn't even know it was possible. So when they came back, they were celebrating that the demons are subject to us. And Jesus said, rejoice not that the demons are subject to you. Rather rejoice that this day your name had been written in the book of life. And Jesus went back to his closet and said the ones that they should not hear. And he said, I thank you, Father, that you have hid this from the prudent and the wise and have revealed it to babes. So he commissioned babes with authority. They don't have stature. They don't have experience. They don't have training. But they were entering into a world of darkness where devils kill, where devils steal, where devils destroy. How then would they be insured is to give them something? That substance is called authority. So if you acknowledge it that you were born into it, you have entered the first layer of the exercise of authority. Many don't know they have authority. They think they need to do something to have it. You were born with it. That's why it was given. If you had to receive it by doing something, it would have been before you received it. If you have it now, what you need to do is to exercise it. That's what politicians do during the election. They deceive you to vote them into power. While they are canvassing support, you can insult them. But when they get into power, they can imprison you for a lifetime. Because the president can sit at home with singlet and sign a B and they will come and demolish an, 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 a, an entire area. He doesn't need to shout, demolish the beauty. He will just write. And most times he's in singlet. That's why those who are wise, they go to them when they are not in the office and stressed. He's about to go and sleep. And then you come, you say there's a challenge. He just writes. The reason is because he doesn't need to be strong to do it. Sometimes they're even sick. So they hypnotize them with alcohol. When they are sick, when they are out of God, then they come and tell them things and they sign. The reason is because they are sitting in that office. So anything they do from there is the power of that office that makes it happen. And the same president that can change the fortune of a nation in a day, when he steps out of power, even if he shouts and goes to 30 television programs and says, nothing will happen. Because in the first scenario, he was walking by something that was given. In the second scenario, he needed to have capacity to do it. The way we deal with the demonic is by the exercise of authority. So if you are aware that you are born into authority, then the next thing you do is to begin to exercise it. You may cast out the demon. It doesn't work. You need to build skill. Because sometimes unbelief is locking in your heart. You said go, but you felt somewhere that he will not go. And when you say out, and the demon shook, 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 you now say, okay, let's go and fast and pray for three days. The demon heard what you said. And the demon knows that, ah, this one is not aware. And so the demon stays there. Even if you scream, after that three days fasting, you will struggle the more. What we cast that devil out is when you step into awareness that this thing is already with me it was given to me because somebody has passed the test i didn't earn it it was given because i was born into it the moment that awareness comes you can come to your family and things are going wrong and you say in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus that's why we exercise this authority in Jesus' name not our name because it's not a stature-based thing. It's Jesus' stature that helps us wield it. Yes, 
He said in Colossians 2.14, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in victory. So he won the fight before he invited you into it. When he was fighting, he didn't invite you because there would have been casualties. Because where he fought that battle was in Hades. And he fought all principalities and power. If he invited you there, you would have died. So he won the victory. And when he came, he said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Take, go in that power. So he handed it over. Your journey began in authority. The question is, are you aware? You are not aware. That's why you run to people. If you know when the crisis begins, you address it. You address it. Jesus speaking to the babes in Luke 10, 21. And he said, when you do it, he said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. That means the devil can route any direction of demonic intelligence. He said, if you do it, nothing shall by any means hurt you. As I read that scripture, I realized God was telling us to dare the devil. Bring your best shot. There is nothing you can do. Nothing. Nothing. See, sometimes I, you lock yourself in the room and you tell yourself, there is nothing the devil can do to me. There is nothing. That's what men, patriarchs like Paul did. They came to a point where he said, what can separate me from the love of God? Is it tribulation? Is it trials? Is it peril? Is it height? Is it death? He checked. He surveyed everywhere. He was trying to build the consciousness. The same way, every believer needs to be aware that I'm too defended to be careful. I'm too defended. When you know this, it's an energy in the spirit. You tell babes who are not taught, they tell you, huh, wisdom is profitable to direct. That is a, it has diffused who you are. When a trailer is coming and you are a smaller car, you stand on the road and say, I'm on my right. Is that what you do? This is not telling you to throw caution to the wind. But this is telling you this is who you are. And the devil knows. So what the devil comes to do is to check whether you know. He came to Adam. He said, God knows that the day you eat of this fruit, you will become like God, knowing good from evil. How was he created? He said he was created in his image and his likeness. So what are you becoming like? You are already like God. So when the devil comes to test, he's trying to know what you know. And what you know is what will deliver your results to your hand. So now the church is so infantile that even when you are dealing with cases, people are watching. It go happen. It no go happen. You just said, hey, hey, it will, will it happen? Will, because nobody knows. Only the man knows. And the, man's because, the man becomes a star. How can light shine in light? It should have been a normal thing. Somebody is casting out devils. It's a normal thing. It's an operation of those who are in light. But today somebody is casting out devils. Everybody is spectating. Because most of us are in darkness. We don't know. You are praying for the sick. And everybody is checking. Will this thing happen? Will this thing happen? Then they are trusting God for you. They are joining their faith for you. Jesus never asked the disciples to join their faith for him. He showed up. He said, get out. The devil cannot but obey. That's how the realm is designed. The one who designed the realm knows where he put the devil. And he knows where he puts you. It's just like in the constitution. The president comes to veto something and then you are arguing. There's no basis for argument. The system was designed such that if the president vetoes, it stands. So the one who designed the realm, he knows where the demonic exists. He knows where you exist. You exist in Christ, in heavenly places. The devil exists down in the bottomless pit. So when you speak from that height, he knows the devil cannot but obey. And even the devil knows. That's why you don't argue with your governor. Because you know. You know that the cadres are already defined. If you know this, you will step out of your crisis. It's beyond an emotion or a sensation. It is walking in the reality of who you are. And nowadays it's so bad. Somebody tells you he's sick. The last thing you think of is prayer. You are suggesting, have you taken drugs? Which one did you take? He said, I had Qatar. You said, you did take Coftrin. Okay, take Mixagrip. 
or take uh, we know all the drugs but what we don't know is that we carry power and Jesus said lay hands on the sick they will recover but the guy doesn't know the moment you know you are prompted to exercise and it is in exercising your authority that you grow that's why the heir will remain a child the reason the heir will remain a child is because he doesn't have spiritual knowledge he doesn't have understanding and the way to gain understanding is not by reading a book primarily is by exercising who you are because it's experiential knowledge when you pray for 30 people you will learn something you've not learned and sometimes when you pray for 30 people 10 dies so when next you are going to pray you will add another menu to your prayer when you pray for 100 people then you will realize that there is something that every time i do it works that's the kind of knowledge you glean when you begin to exercise authority that's why i said whoever uses milk is a babe and is unskillful he's unskillful it's not that he's not grown he's unskillful in the word of righteousness he said but strong meat it belongs to them who by reason of use who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern good and evil if you must gain stature before you do it you shouldn't have tried it until you gain stature because trying it would have meant setting yourself up but the men of stature doing it today they started doing it when they were babes all of us casting out devils today we knew when we cast out devils and they didn't go out some were even slapped they continued all of us praying for the sick today they are healed we knew when we pray for some and they died but we didn't wait to gain stature we know the way to stature is by practicing so we kept at it we kept at it even though it seemed it was not working because we're dealing with something in our hearts that's where the limitation is the mountain is not what you see it's what's in the heart so he said say to this mountain be thou removed and be that cast out and if you doubt not in your heart so the mountain in your heart can be taller than the mountain you are seeing if you are able to level the mountain in your heart the mountain you are seeing can be leveled but if you don't exercise you will never believe when next something grows on your body before you call somebody begin to deal with it and you will be shocked a point will come nothing will grow because the devil knows that if he tries it he is enrolling you to a school of the spirit because school of the spirit is not a bible school school of the spirit is the school of practice of spiritual things until you gain mastery so the devil will not bring anybody around you anymore because he knows that if he afflicts anybody around you he has given you work and you will be there until things change and if things change you have grown this is why certain people are struggling with demons every day others don't know where they exist they walk so much in light and it looks as if the devil doesn't exist that's the realm god wants to bring us and that's through power you come to a point where you command your morning you come to a point where you command your evening you come to a point where you command your results you say what you want to see and it happens that way none of us should be a spectator every one of us is an active participator in the game but the question is are you playing your role do you know that casting out devils and doing the work of the ministry is not for the apostles the prophets the evangelists the pastors the teachers but this truth has been so thwarted now it looks as if Apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, and teachers are the men of power. Their job is to equip others to go and do the work. The people that should have the highest record of healing, the highest record of demons cast out, are those who are on the pew. You are the one who have the time to deal with the devils. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and teachers should be here doing the training program to equip you. You are the one going to the field to do the action and see the manifestation. But today you ask Christians, how many people have you prayed for in your life? Some have not prayed for one. They have been in church for 15 years. How many devils have you cast out? Not one. They've been in church for 20 years. What have you been doing? 
That's why you live in fear. The way to gain boldness is to enter the battlefield. And if God is sending you to go and tear down demonic stronghold, is it your own territory that the devil will come to? What audacity do I have to travel from Benue to Joss? The demons in Joss are different from the demons in Benue. If I don't know who I am in Christ, this will be set up. Because I came here and made an appearance in the realm. I have increased my warfare. But we are not only taking charge over our lives. We look for where the devil is and we go there to dislodge them. It's an authority. Not because you are an apostle or a prophet. But because you have it as a believer. Some people try once. It doesn't work. They back out. In Acts chapter 14 verse 3. He said, long time abode day, speaking boldly in the Lord, the Lord confirming the words of his grace, granting that signs and wonders be done by their hands. They tarried for a long time. The time you use in complaining, if you deploy it in dealing with that matter, you will be shocked. You will be shocked. I started a mentoring program online. Mentoring hundreds and thousands of people. And in few weeks, the testimonies some of them were receiving, they were testimonies I received after many years of working with the Lord because nobody told me. A lady who has never, never preached to anybody, not even any member of her family, she was on the mentoring program after three weeks. She went out and organized an outreach. And the outreach she organized is not around church people that understand church language. She went to where people were laboring, building houses, and gathered people on the street. She preached to them. Fifty were healed instantly. And she prayed for them. One deaf ear, completely deaf, open. Somebody that came with fracture and POP, the fracture got healed instantly. And she said, what? What is happening here? After three weeks, she went again. Went again. The healing moved from two to nine. Never preached to anybody before. But she heard something and she was willing to give it a try. That's when you will know that healing is not a special prerogative of the apostles and prophets. It's what every believer should see. Because the guy who is sick is oppressed of the devil. And when you show up, you cast out the devil. People can sit down. You can be talking to them and dealing with the cases. We don't need to even organize a meeting. You... What's wrong with you? Pain, pain, go. Check. Has he gone? He's gone. Glory to God. It's not to come and, oh, 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 where everywhere is, people are falling, and then few people come and say they are here, say it's a powerful service. It's not powerful because it was loud. It's powerful because authority was exercised against the devil. There are times when God moves like that and we are lying. But whether God, no matter how God is moving, the result is constant. I came charged for a power service. He said, teach. And we'll finish teaching like this and we'll pray for the sick and they'll be healed like this and we'll take testimonies like this, casually. Because it's not a big deal to deal with the devil. He shouldn't gain attention. In certain quarters, people come and the devil is, the devil, the gear is shaking, the gear is shaking and disrupt the whole service. And the man won't teach the word of God for 20 minutes because the devil stopped the service. Where do you come from? Who are you? Why are you in this body? What? what? Nonsense. Jesus had time to ask you where you came from. Where, where does he have that time from? Where is the time? The time that I should be equipping people. You are wasting it. That, they, they, what the devil needs to hear is get out. Get out. Where did this sickness come from? What did your grandfather do? The disciples came to him and like, Who seen that this man was born blind? Say nay. Neither him nor his father, that the glory of God should be made manifest and come. And I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day, for the night cometh when no man walketh. So I don't have time to find out if it's his father or his ancestors that, that, that committed sin. All I came to do is to end the sickness. That's my own job description. I'm not an archiver to come and find out whether the thing came from the mother's lineage or it came from even if it comes from the father's lineage combined with the mother's lineage and the one he's doing at the end of the day if I say be healed he is healed Amen. wasting energy doing things that don't count where did we learn it from 
is called the traditions of men. He said, you made the word of God of none effect by your traditions. How did Jesus do it? How did Paul do it? Paul became so busy training people that there was no time to even go for the healing meeting. He said, take my handkerchief, go and touch them. I am too busy training. The guy is arguing with the Greek, trying to bring them into the faith. You are now calling him to go and waste time to pray for 500. Take handkerchief. I don't need to go there. Something is on this handkerchief. And they said they put the handkerchief on the sick. And everybody was healed. Devils were cast out. What did Paul know? What did Paul know? The same demon that somebody else is fasting and praying for five weeks. The same demon that we have to organize a healing service with 13 intercessors praying to cast out. Somebody has said, I'm busy. Sorry, I can't come. Take hanky. And today you invite a man of God. He doesn't come. Everybody is discouraged because it's men we want to see, not God. And the guy is casting out devils. And the demon is casting everywhere. And the guy is looking whether people are noticing. I get power. When I see, say power. Na power. Na power. Say Jesus rebuked the deaf and dumb spirit. He threw the boy to the ground. Jesus had gone. He didn't even have time. What's that? What is that? The devil will go whether he likes it or not. He doesn't have time for the charade. And after the devil threw the boy down, the devil left. Because what he said is get out. We like sensation. We like sensation. Some of the most dangerous manifestations are not captured on camera. Because it's a normal thing for this man. I came to provoke your hunger. And to bring you to a realization. That this thing is not a show. It's your life in the spirit. The sensation. It doesn't, it doesn't outlast a day. After one day, everything will vaporize. What you carry is your own. Forget the sensation. Exercise your authority in Christ. It was given to you at birth. It's part of your birthright. Your authority in the spirit is part of your birthright. Grow in it by exercising it. Sometimes you cast out a demon. The demon refuses to go. Go back and check. Everywhere Jesus cast out devils. Check. Read it. Read it. Equip yourself. Go back. You pray for the sick. They are not healed. Go back. Gather all the healing scriptures. Find out how they did it. And go back. That's how you grow. You grow. Putting demand on the grace of God on your life. And exercising your spirit. Exercising your spirit. A point we call. I, I watched the chronicles of healings. Of Reverend Chris. There was a time when in healing school they bring one person. And Reverend Chris will kneel down. Pray. He will walk around the person. He will walk around the person. He will hold the leg. He will do this, do this. They will carry the person up. The whole congregation will stretch out and pray. He was building himself. And a point came where all he needs to do is to come out in white suit. And they line up. Out, 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 out. And then he goes to those sitting on the wheelchair. Where? What happened? I went to India. You went to India. I went to America. You went to America. So what did the doctor say? The doctor said, I will never walk again. And then he will come and touch. And sometimes he will move back. He's playing with it now. <laughs> you know what the Bible says? He said, you are a choosing generation. He didn't say you will be. You are. See, the problem we have is the things that present terms in scriptures, we make them past terms. Or we make them futuristic terms. That's one of the crises we have. What God makes present term, don't make it a futuristic term. You are a choosing generation. A royal priesthood. God's own special people. called to show forth the excellencies of God. So when you move in power, you are showing the excellencies of God. He didn't say you will. He said you are. It's a present time reality. We come to pray for people. He said you are healed. We say you will be healed. And then we shift the person's faith from now to the future. Because we pray we didn't see the sign. If I pray for somebody and it's not healed, I say you are healed. It's not your fault. I couldn't deliver it. I will come back. 
So your faith is where it is. In order to save face, I won't run away and make it difficult for you. That's why it becomes more difficult to heal somebody that has already been prayed for. Because you make the person feel it can't be done. That was the grief, the grievance of Catherine Kuma. Somebody stands up, enters a car, drive for 10 hours, come for a meeting, and the pastor says he didn't have enough faith. It's a lie. The faith that made a disabled person travel and endure stress for 10 hours. If that is not called faith, then we have to redefine what faith is. Or faith is not what we say it is. From your Jerusalem, begin to hunt demons. If somebody is possessed, nobody is to pray, I'm here. And pray. Somebody is sick, pray. And when you pray, check and keep checking. What happened? I prayed yesterday because you have a hope that your faith will manifest. And if you begin placing demand in a short while, you will shift. This is how it works. Nobody does it because it's born special. It's the same commodity that all of us have access to. That's why I said he dealt to every man the major of it. The same authority is what all of us are born by. You don't know who you are because you have not put demand on your calling. You have not placed demand on what God has put in you. You have shied away too many times. You saw the person in the public. The Holy Ghost said, pray for the person. You didn't know you were in the school. The Holy Ghost knows if you pray, the person will not be healed. But he's trying to develop your faith. The lady, the hand is withered. She is crippled in the public. The Holy Ghost knew if you pray, she will not be healed. But he said, pray. And then you say, wait. You now walk around until everybody leaves. And then you now sneak and come and bend down. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. And then you move. You are watching whether something will happen. You will never grow. <laughs> because you are not even sincere. That's why when we talk about dead men, it's not just victory over sin. Your ego will die. You have not prayed for it. <laughs> I went for a meeting, ministered, people were slain everywhere. I saw somebody on the wheelchair, the leg was withered. I came and said, in the name of Jesus, I made the decree. Jack the person up, he fell down. Jack the person up, he fell down. I stood up and said, it's not your fault. <laughs> I'm still learning this thing. <laughs> you want people to see you as an accomplished apostle. You will end up creating impression and not impact. Come to a place because you know this, this song, stare the people. You now carry that song, sing the song, sing the song. When people are stare, you say, talk, talk, talk. You will create impression and not impact. The Holy Ghost will keep training and building you. Most times I come for meetings. People know my songs already. I want to do impartation. I say, tell them to stop the keyboard. Because it's not the volume. It's the supply of the spirit. How much spirit do you have? And there are times where I say, stop the keyboard. I pray nobody is imparted. At least nothing visible happen. And I carry my shame and leave the altar. <laughs> and I go home to go and build more spirit. And I come again. He say, tell them to shut the, the sound. And I say, shut the sound. Lord, touch. One person will shake and the, the ushers, the ushers will not even allow the person to fall so that they will know that somebody fell. The ushers will grab the person. It will, sometimes I will feel like slapping that usher. Leave the person to fall. God is the one pulling the person down. Why are you stopping God? At least, if they hear the sound of the chair, they will know something happened. Then the ushers, three ushers, we hold one person like this. Are you taking the person to the mortuary? Leave this person to fall. And at the end of the day, some of the people that came for the meeting say, Ah, is that the Apostle Mike? 
My brother, why well, we thank God? We thank God. <laughs> and now we know, we know their heart. And then I'll carry my shame and go home. When I come home, the Holy Ghost will now say fast for seven days. If I didn't receive that shame, I wouldn't have fasted. I would have gone home and said, oh boy, in a powerful meeting. And then every day people will be falling. And I will not go beyond that level. So when God wants to shift you, he looks for a way to provoke you so that you can exercise more. <laughs> Provokes you. And then you can put the food aside. And a time comes where you come to certain places as you are walking, the people are falling down. And they are not just falling down. They get up healed. Not headache. Blood condition. And somebody tells you, I heard your message. I was cleansed of cancer. And then you sit down. You tell somebody it's well with you. And she gets a job in London. Not because you did anything. Somebody's certificate lost. And you come. You say, I declare that it is found. And they bring the certificate to the person. Not because you did anything. You have built your faith. You went through the corridor of shame. You went through the corridor of crisis. You went to the corridor of tires, obeying the Holy Ghost. And he kept building your spiritual muscles. And now you can do anything through Christ. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. It's the journey of authority. We grow in it. We grow. We don't receive it when we have stature. We receive it as babes, but we grow in it. How much have you grown the authority of God in your life? That's what your generation is looking for. They don't want to see your face. It's your horn they want to see. And it's God that exalts the horn of a man. He said, thy horn have I exalted like the horn of the unicorn. I've anointed you with fresh oil. There are many of you here that should be shaking your word now. But you eluded process. You ran away when the Holy Ghost was drawing you. When people had crisis, God woke you up to pray. You slept off. You thought it was only about the people. You didn't know it was a school of the spirit. Tonight God will heal the sick. But, but much more. Many will receive graces. To walk the same. Many will receive graces. To walk the same. If you are sick, wave at me. If you have any form of infirmity. A pain, a fracture. An issue with any part of your body, your ears, your eyes. We were in Jigawa last week. Shared with them casually. Saying the name of Jesus be healed. And we stood waiting. And the first person that was healed was a girl of four years. Completely blind. I knew the girl didn't hear the message. Because she's an outside girl. Even if she was hearing sound. There's no way she understood what I said. She was four years old. Perhaps she was sleeping. But that's the first person the power of God touched. Eyes open. And it was a festival of testimonies. I now knew much more again. That sometimes it's beyond what you say. It's the ministration of the spirit. And if anybody. Mm, you reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign. this very video we brought away we believed you were mightily blessed contained in this message are steps and principles you could apply to your life and get the desired result that is required to take you into the next level of your spiritual journey and walk with god once again thank you for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and most importantly share this video with friends family and loved ones we would love to hear from you 
share your thoughts down below in the comment section and we'll see you in our next video.